guys, when you get to Bulia, I don't think a visit would be complete if you didn't visit the Min Min Light Encounter Center. Now this was built in 2000 and apparently it's dedicated to the history of the Min Min Light. I'm hoping that uh, we might be able to get in there and uh, shed some light on this strange phenomena, yeah, if you excuse the pun. One explanation the old timers have is that the Min Min Light could be an emu with a torch shoved up its bum, like that. My name is Anna Kara. I'm Tourism Officer for Bulia Shire Council. I work at the Bulia Information Centre. We have Information Centre and Min Min Encounter, which is a 45 minute sound and light animatronic show, proudly owned and operated by Bully Shire Council. You want to know, don't you? The Mid Mid Lights. Everyone will tell you they're some spooky spirit, some intelligent, glowing glob. The Min Min Counter isn't, it hasn't gone super aged, it's not press button technology, it's actually mannequin figures telling their versions. You know, you walk into that one scene with the bar. You know, you've got three different stories there. Um, you walk into the next scene, and they, so it's across people that have lived and breathed in this country and that have seen it. What Boy has got in here in the Min Min Encounter is telling you those different stories. Maybe the only explanation for the Min Min is the one you give yourself when you see the lights. Well, there you have it. That was the Min Min Encounter experience. And I have to say, I'm actually very impressed. When you think this part of Australia, there's no shopping centres, there's no Woolworths, there's no Kmart, and yet Bullia have managed to create this animatronic wonderland that actually, I think, goes into uh, fairly balanced explanations for the Min Min Light. I mean, they're, they're covering things like the, the gas and the, the mining of the area and just some of the cultural sort of things to do with it. And uh, really just giving good explanation or good coverage of what this sort of phenomena was and is. And uh, I can definitely see that families coming in here and kids and also just a lot of tourists would really get a lot of have a lot of fun here and get a lot of interesting information so it's definitely well worth the visit if you get a chance to come. John, you run the hotel here, the Desert Sands Motel. Have you had many tourists come in who have seen them or come out here looking for them? Oh, lots of them, look? lots of them come out looking for them, yeah. But, really? but, but the thing what they say about the Min Min Light, it'll find you, you don't find it. And, and that's, you know, and the, all the old drovers years ago used to see them because they camped out all the time. And, yeah. and uh, people, you know, you see them in their vehicles, used to follow them in vehicles. But wife and I were just sort of south of here, but it was in a bit of a rocky outcrop with sandals on the top. And uh, yeah, we, were just, we just stopped probably eight, nine o'clock at night and uh, got out and then we we're just yarning. And then suddenly this white light appeared on the, on the top of the sandhill, probably, oh, probably 200 metres away. And it just, it's like everyone else has sort of said about it. You know, all the reports seem to be very much the same and just this white light just bounced along. Oh, probably seven, eight, ten minutes, I don't know. And just yeah, bounced along, we just sort of stood there with our mouths open and wondering what the hell's going on. And uh, yeah, then it just disappeared. And we're just <laughs> looking at each other and, well, what was that? Yeah, the next morning I got on the trail bike and went up and had a look and, and uh, yeah, no tracks anywhere, nothing. No, nothing, just, yeah. And have you ever heard of anyone else seeing them? More and more here, living here in Bullia. Yeah. And uh, this seems to be the, you know, the epicentre of them. Yeah. Around here, there's someone not long ago just camped out here, 8K, and he got out, out of the, went out of the caravan at night and he saw this light and took photos of it. I mean, what do you think it is? <laughs> well, it, it, it's all where they're, it's all part of the inland sea all through here, and that's, that's where they've all been sighted. Yeah, that's important that this was an inland sea, wasn't it? There's still mm. a lot of fossils out here as well, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marine fossils. Marine they find fossils, here. aren't there? And all these round rocks here, concretions that were you know, in, the, in the seabed, and whether it's gases and, and or, you know, there's uranium out here, and yeah, lots of gas. What it is, don't know.
Got myself a no car made in 65 Got a pocket full of bills And a suitcase of cash This is Attila Doing some restoration to an old Cold and that we found Ah, she'll be right Look at that how much you want for it? Oh, no, I'm going to have to start an auction, all right. What are you going to... She's got a couple of dings in it, mate. Should be right. Oh, what are those? Termites. <laughs> 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 I spent time doing a program in the early 90s for the ABC radio, Radio I, called To Catch a Flying Star. And I interviewed many truck drivers that did the air highway in the Nullarbor. There's a predominant amount of accounts in the Min Min Light there. And those truck drivers would say that uh, they would witness a light in their rear view mirror. And after a while, they began to realize that this light is actually, is this a motorbike? behind me, getting too close. But the light is actually at a level that's, that means that it's actually up off the road. And they start to get worried and that light may travel with them for literally minutes or maybe hours. Chef, no, no, I'm, I'm scared. Chef, I'm really scared. Dad, no, we have to keep driving. Oh my God. We're not stopping. And it's gone again. It's gone again. Chef, I'm really freaked out. It's gone Dad, again. Dad, we're really scared. It keeps chasing us. What I said? No, 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 definitely not. It's back again, it's back again. Oh my god. Where is it now? Right in the background. Yes. It what? went up in the sky. It went up in the sky. I just said I wanted to see one, I didn't <laughs> think it would chase us. If actually you know what? If there is a truck stop, let's pull over and have a look because I want to see if it is a but I don't, I don't think it is. What if we get abducted? Historically, it dates back before uh, European settlement in this continent, but also at the height of European settlement, many people were having encounters. And there's some very famous stories at the turn of the 20th century of drovers that actually witnessed Min Min Lights and made a quest to spend their life to capture a Min Min Light and uh, it being just a completely futile quest. I was about 10 years old and we were, we learnt to drive at a very young age, manuals, and we were allowed to drive over to Five Mile, which is a bore about five kilometres here from the house and uh, we used to drive over there at any chance we got <laughs> just to check it even though it didn't need checking and um, uh, I went over late one afternoon uh, by myself and granddad was still here and he was going around the paddock to check the fence because we just put cattle in there and as I was driving back to come across, about to cross the main road um, I saw this light coming down the road so I thought it was Grandad because it was just a single light. It would have been on the old ag bike. And um, so I sat there waiting for him because I thought I could shine my headlights for him to get home because it was getting dark. And I sat there and I sat there and the light just wasn't moving. So I thought, oh, well, maybe it's a car parked or something like that. And um, so I ended up just making my way home. And as I was in the middle of the road, it sped up. <laughs> and I couldn't go fast enough, but it, it was that fast and it actually ended up in the cab with me and then disappeared. <laughs> and then when I got home, which is, you know, a kilometre to go, Grandad was sitting on the couch. <laughs> so I was very freaked out. <laughs> Breathing slowly, I smoke my
Guys, after a couple of days of driving, we have finally made it to the ruins of the Min Min Hotel. Now, legend has it that this is the location where the Min Min Light was given its name. According to the story, there's a stockman who's traveling from Winton to Boulia, and he was going past the ruins of the Min Min Hotel in 1917. Apparently by then, the hotel had already been burnt down. And as he was riding by at night on his horse, he saw a huge ghost light come out of that cemetery and proceed to chase him. Now this frightened the stockman, as it would, and uh, apparently made his way to the nearest station and then managed to make a police report. And the police obviously made a lot of fun of him and made light of it. However, after that first night, other people started to see more and more of these strange lights in this area coming out of the grave, coming out of the ruins of the old pub, and they decided to call it the Min Min Light. 